Okay, good afternoon again, class. And we're going to talk now about the C pattern, uh, which is the last of our grade nine parallel line theorem um, angle patterns that we need to know. The C pattern is an interesting one. The C pattern, I will draw it for you. Once again, could be a forward or backwards letter. In the first case, I'll draw the forward C. You can hopefully see that there, right? That makes a lot of sense. It looks like the letter C. Of course, if I wanted to, I could also draw a backwards C, which I will draw right here. Okay, I'm not sure what that thing, that dot there is. Don't worry about that. But that's the backwards C, right? Yeah, backwards C, okay? All right. So what does the C pattern tell us? How is it useful? Well, the C pattern um, tells us an interesting fact. C pattern tells us that when you look at the interior part of the C pattern, so for example, if I go ahead and I, I'll draw it in a different highlighter color now, let's go with the light, this one here. If I draw the C pattern here, what I can tell, maybe I'll make that a little darker, need darker sometimes to, to see clearly, okay, so C pattern. Here's what the C pattern tells us. It tells us if I know the measure of this angle here, okay, which is actually angle ADH, so it's angle ADH, um, then I will be able to figure out the measure of this angle right here, which I'm just drawing in the corner here angle EFB, angle EFB. Now, I know that some of you are going to immediately look at the other lessons and say, oh, does, does that mean angle ADH must equal angle EFB? And the answer is no, they don't equal each other. The C pattern is a different rule. The C pattern tells us that the two angles on the interior part of the C must add up to 180 degrees. Okay, co-interior angles must add up to 180 degrees. I'll write that in at the end, okay? So what that means is if I tell you that angle ADH, if I tell you that angle ADH is equal to, let's call it 120 degrees, well, guess what? Angle EFB, this angle in here, must be equal to 180 minus 120. Angle EFB must be equal to 60 degrees. Okay? The interior angles, the co-interior angles, must add up to 180. Let's draw a backwards C in here. Uh, we'll do it in a different color. Let's do this color. So if I draw a backwards C in right here, and I tell you that uh, angle... CDH is equal to 60 degrees, guess what? You would know that angle uh, GFB, this angle here, angle GFB would have to equal 120 because the co-interior angles this angle and this angle must add up to 180. So we'll write that in as a final conclusion. Co-interior angles, i.e., in other words, the inside part of the C pattern. So co-interior angles are the, move this over so we can see it, that's really important, inside angles of the C. All right and they must add up to 180. They always add up to 180 degrees. So if you know one of them, you can just figure out the other one. All right, uh, so now, and I guess knowing from what you've seen in our previous videos, you could also say that the co-interior angles must be supplementary, even though they don't form a straight line, but they're still supplementary because they add up to 180. That's the last rule of our parallel line theorem that you need for grade nine applied math. I'm going to assign you some questions on all of our patterns, and um, I would like you to try to get them done. And I want to thank you guys for listening. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.